burn for cloud. What is good, y'all? Hope you're having a great day today. I'm having myself a great day. It's an amazing day out, and I'm wishing you guys all the best on this fine day. Thank you guys for all the support that this channel has been receiving, all the love, man. It goes such a long way. It's so cool to get to connect to like-minded people. I'm meeting new, amazing souls every single day, and it's awesome. We are a family, man. We endless souls up in here. And yeah, it just means the world. Thank you guys so much. I can tell this channel is about to go. It's about to go up, as Ice Cold JT would say. <laughs> Shout out Ice Cold JT. Today, we're going to talk about visualizing. And we're specifically going to go into more of Neville Goddard's work. We talked about him last week with the ladder technique. But man, Neville Goddard is so, so, so good. And his work is life changing. I'm telling you, he is the king of visualizing. He literally dedicated his life to show as many people as he could the power of their own imagination, which we all possess, right? He talks about the imagination being our connection to the universe, our connection to God, right? We're all individualized expressions of source, but our connection is the imagination and our thoughts, right? So I wanna give you guys a couple more practices and techniques that come straight from Neville Goddard's work that will hopefully allow you to familiarize yourself with your imaginary body and also hopefully make visualizing more fun all right because it's never fun if you're worried about doing it wrong or whatever it may be and you end up shying away from it because it seems more of a chore right you end up dreading it and it all goes out the window right so these techniques are just a way of sort of building that foundation understanding what it feels like what it looks like to be imagining a scene and hopefully to um Put it through your head that you literally can create any vision within your imagination that can eventually be replicated onto this screen of space into this physical reality okay neville goddard says imagination is everything as within so without all right he has a book called feeling is the secret and it's all about pairing a mental image with a heightened elevated emotion and those two those two manifest man that's how it goes <laughs> But I want to talk today about a couple simpler techniques. So let's jump into the first one. Before I start, when it comes to building your, your, um, you know, your, your mental images, right, of your scenes, your, your imaginary scenes, right, that's what they call them, um, you want to make them in, in past tense, right? You want to have it already have been received what it is you're looking to manifest, already have experienced what it is you would like to manifest. So some ways of getting into that and actually, um, you know, putting detail into your visualization is to ask yourself these questions. What would I be doing if I had already received my manifestation? How would I be feeling? What would I be saying? Who would I be talking to? Okay. And if you can incorporate more and more of these elements, more and more of this detail, that is going to allow it to impress deeper into the subconscious mind, okay? The subconscious mind loves detail. It loves clarity, all right? So that was just a simple thing before we start. Today's practices aren't even going to be about visualizing an end scene. It's just, like I said, familiarizing yourself with your imaginary body. So let's start with number one. I'm hoping every single person is inside right now. Please be inside a house. If you're outside, try to go in, in somewhere, all right? I want you to go into a familiar location. I know we're probably all in our home, so that's good. Um, go into a room and sit with your face um, pointed at, at a wall, right? So be looking at a wall. And what I want you to do is within your imagination, imagine that you are looking with your eyes forward, even though physically you are staring at a wall, I want you to imagine what the room looks like behind you. So basically it's reverse. Basically, if you are sitting on this side of the room, I want you to visualize whatever is back here. And it should be familiar to you because you live here and because you are familiar with this place, right? And this is going to allow you to um, prove to yourself that you really can conjure up a scene just like that all right it definitely helps when you incorporate memory 
So let's do that. Let's close our eyes. Close your eyes and make sure that you are seated facing a wall. And now I want you to visualize whatever is behind you as if it is in front of you and you are looking at it right now with your eyes. Visualize all the detail, all the colors, all the different textures, the way the light hits, whatever it may be. Pretty cool, huh? And that's pretty much it. I don't know what I was waiting for. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of time. <laughs> but do you see how it's, it's very easy to conjure up something from your memory? All right, so let's go into another one. That was a very simple one, right? Just imagining what's behind you. I hope this makes sense. All right, I, I feel kind of weird talking about this. <laughs> and then second one, let's say that you are, you, you have a, you, you, you have a house, you live in a house, right? Imagine yourself while you're in your house right now, wherever you're sitting, probably still facing that wall. <laughs> Imagine yourself outside in front of your house. If you live in an apartment building, imagine yourself in front of the apartment building. I want you to imagine what it looks like. Imagine the scene of your house, your front yard, your house, the color of your house, all the usual things that you can remember. Same with the apartment building, the apartment building, how it looks, all of the blocks that it's built out of, all the windows, everything you can see. I want you to visualize that and then we are going to begin walking in. So within your imagination, with your eyes closed, visualize yourself in front of the place that you're currently in and then I want you to walk inside. Take the walk and this should be familiar because you do it all the time. Take that walk inside and I want you to walk in to your house, into your apartment building and walk all the way back to your body to where your physical body is right now within your imagination. So pause the video if you need to, but do that, all right? And this should be something that you might find surprisingly easy because it's right here. You live it every single day. This is a concept that Neville Goddard calls bilocation, which is where you can be in two places at once, one physically and one imaginary. And what's cool is when you're incorporating um, or when you're trying to build a vision of already having received something, it definitely helps to um, place yourself in the environment of a location that you're very familiar with. So maybe imagine celebrating with your family or, um, you know, being in that house, going back to your house and, and seeing someone or whatever it may be, make it familiar, something that's coming from your memory. What I, the whole hope of this thing was to show you that um, your memory is very, very powerful uh, when it comes to visualization, but it hopefully allowed you to become more familiar with your imaginary body, right? Imagine taking the steps, imagine the walk, right? And also in walking, in visualizing all these things, it usually ends up allowing you to feel it, to feel it because you've already lived it. You know what it feels like to do all these things, right? So these are just some basic techniques. Like I said, if you're building a final end scene, right? Because Neville Goddard always advises that. I know a lot of people talk about process visualizations, right? Which is visualizing the process, visualizing yourself in the middle of receiving it, right? But Neville Goddard swears by the simplicity of visualizing the end scene, visualizing the goal already complete. So when it comes to visualizing an end scene, ask yourself, what would I be doing? Who would I be with? How would I be feeling? What would I be saying, right? As many questions as you could ask yourself because there probably are more, but incorporate as much detail as possible. And the cool thing is, when you're drawing from your memory, it should allow you to visualize those mental images a lot easier and the feelings that come along with them will arise much easier. I feel like this was all over the place, but I hope this made some sense. Two small techniques for you to practice 
getting familiar with your imaginary body, feeling what it's like, seeing what it's like to exist within it, and hopefully um, allowing you guys to see that it's really not that hard to make a mental image and make one come to life that is very vivid, right? So hope you guys got something out of this. Like I said, I feel like it was all over the place, but I'm wishing you guys all the best. Peace and love. Hope you're having a great day. And I'm out. Remember, life is a gift. Yo, that kind of sounded like I was doing... <laughs> that kind of sounded like I was doing the intro again. But anyway, um, peace, y'all. Remember, life is a gift. There's no stress and there's no pressure. Peace. <laughs>